the 34 of the newest makeup products at Sephora that I've been testing. Now, these are not no first impressions, you guys. These are products that I'm actually giving my final opinion on, meaning I've been testing them with multiple products in multiple ways with multiple wear tests. So I'm here to finally give you my opinion on these products. Now this is actually part two. If you missed it, I will link down below part one where I covered complexion. And now we are moving on to the eyes and the lip products. So let's get started with the eyes. I do have a new eyebrow gel to share with you from ABH and it is amongst one of my favorite eyebrow gels ever. And that is coming from somebody who is very, very picky about her brows because you guys, Brow gels do not last on me. My brows will fall straight down unless it is a hard hold brow gel. And that's what this ABH is. And I love the applicator on it because there's a longer bristle side, a shorter bristle side, and then a flat bristle side to press the eyebrow hairs down. And this does set, it has a hard set to it, but that's what keeps my brows glued to my face. But look at this. Like my eyebrows will last all day with this and the applicator is great because the bristles really do separate the eyebrow hairs to make my eyebrows look fuller. And this one, comparing it to the Too Faced, doesn't get white or dandruffy or flaky in my eyebrows as of now so far. So I'm also really happy about this. So this one is making its way to my number one favorite brow gel. There's a couple competitors, Rare Beauty being one of them, but this is definitely up there with the Rare Beauty. I have a couple eyeshadow products or one, two, three, four, five, six to be exact. Two are from the Huda Beauty Creamy launch. So these are her Creamy Obsessions palettes. I did do a full dedicated video if you want to check those out. I have tutorials. I have the Grage Creamy Obsessions and then the Neutral Brown Creamy Obsessions. So I did put on the Neutral Brown Creamy Obsessions. I like this palette better than the Grage. I think it lasts longer. And when I first apply these eyeshadows, I'm really impressed by them, right? Because you don't expect a cream to almost blend out on the eyes like a powder eyeshadow or with the same ease. Now my hesitation with these is these creams here they look very pigmented but they're really not when you apply them. They definitely are much more sheer on the eyelid. I don't get that opacity with them. It is pretty impressive what you can get with eyeliner but I struggle with these because they do not last long on my eyes at all. Four hours max the eyeshadows faded and creased so longevity on these unfortunately isn't there for me the like I said the application is really easy it's quite shocking for a cream shadow but I think it's so easy because it is lighter on pigment and doesn't really build up in pigment and it doesn't last long now the shimmery shades in here really aren't really wet or creamy so those ones I do like I think they almost set the matte cream eyeshadows so I do like the shimmers in here particularly in the neutral browns we have this one that I have all over my eyelid today I mean it's stunning it's really flaky it's one of those ones where you have to press it on the eye and like kind of spread that chunk out to get the glimmer reflex but it's really beautiful and I'm not saying you can't get beautiful looks with these but the longevity on these just doesn't last for me so unfortunately I'm not a fan of these. Prada Beauty also launched in Sephora. This is not a new product but it is new to Sephora and I picked up one of the Dimensions Multi-Effect Eyeshadows. Now if you're typically a fan of luxury style formulas I do think you'll enjoy this but I'd still push you to spend your money on brands like Tom Ford and Charlotte Tilbury because these don't give anything special. They blend really easily as they should for the price point but I'm not in love with this formula. It doesn't stand out in my array of luxury eyeshadows. There's, it's, it's really expensive and it's outdated of a formula if you ask me. So it performs fine. If you like pigmented eyeshadows, this isn't going to be for you. Not worth it. Go for Tom Ford or go for Charlotte Tilbury if you're going to be spending money in that price point. Next up, I have two palettes from Natasha Denona. This one is an older one, but I do want to get this out of the way. This is the My Mini Dream palette. This is actually surprisingly gorgeous. I wasn't wowed by it in my original review, but honestly, as I said would happen, it's one of those palettes that I'm reaching for a lot. So I gotta eat my words in that review. It's really beautiful, and I think one of the reasons that 
I am reaching for this is because there is a varying level of depths here, which makes it very easy to have more versatility in just a simple five pan eyeshadow palette. These are pretty neutral colors, so they kind of go with any look. They're great for every day. So as somebody who is a neutral eyeshadow wearer, this has been something that I have been reaching for without even having to think about it. So while it wasn't really special in the Natasha Denona line per se, uh, it's one of those where you kind of reach for it when you don't want to put any thought into it. So I've been going for that one a lot. Now, more recently, Natasha Denona launched the Hypernatural Face Palette, and this one was a little bit out there for her. In this one, you have both cheek and eye products. So there's a bronzer trio, blush duo, and a unique kind of cream and powder hybrid formula. I think it's very interesting that this formula launched at the same time as the Huda Beauty. Now these are more putty leaning, not necessarily cream cream, but that kind of hybrid bouncy feeling these have. They also don't give a bunch of pigment just like the Huda Beauty. However, I do think these have a better longevity than the Huda Beauty in terms of differences. And then the bronze and contour, honestly, I think it works for a wider range of skin tones than to be expected, but of course it still doesn't touch every range. I actually quite like this one a lot. I really like the formula. It's very silky, not too powdery, and I think the blush is really beautiful as well. So for this as a palette and as a Natasha Denona fan and collector, do keep that in mind. This is an okay pickup. I'm not in love with it. It's not the traditional Natasha Denona eyeshadow formula. And for me, it's like I love the Natasha Denona eyeshadow formulation so much. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? But it's a new formula. I think she did a decent job with it, but it's not a formula for me. This is kind of a quick, simple makeup palette. You can't get too complex looks with it, which it doesn't fill up my cup most of the time. So yeah, I mean, it's some of my favorite from her range. It's not a bad palette, it's good quality, but it's not the kind of palette I'm going for. Then, this is one of the newer launches here in this video. Makeup by Mario launched the Master Mats The Neutrals. Call me crazy, but I do feel like this is a bit more of a creamy formula than the original, or maybe mine is just a little bit older and dried out, but this did feel creamier to me. Now, if you are fair, you have a cool complexion, or cool undertone, excuse me, I think you're really going to like this palette. I stand by, you know, this isn't the latest and greatest of matte eyeshadows, but it certainly gets the job done. If you're looking to build your matte collections and you're hopping into Sephora, that's the most accessible for you, I do think these are great accessory palettes in your collection. However, I have matte eyeshadows that I like better. So this isn't a palette that I was jumping for joy about, but I do think he did a great job capturing that truly kind of more cool toned neutral brownie palette and this will be a great option of matte colors to have in my collection so I think it's a decent palette altogether I do really like it but in case you're wondering what I'm comparing it to it's like once you try Viseart it's hard to go back the makeup by Mario is more of a sheer formulation Viseart gives you a little bit more pigment punch so if you want that sheer more buildable formulation you actually might like the makeup by Mario better and it's easier to get a hold of. So yeah, I mean, I definitely think there's a large range of you who are going to enjoy this palette and I've liked it. A little forgettable for me, but I liked it. Pharmacy launched a new lip smoothie in honey vanilla. And ooh, you guys, oh, my voice cracked. It is so good and yummy. Now this formulation, I'm comparing it to Laneige and you know, all the other lip butters. This one is really thin on the lips. It's almost a little bit more liquidy when it dries down, but it is very nice and hydrating. I will say when I do have foundation on, this kind of takes the foundation off if I go over the lip line, so I don't love that. But I do like how lightweight it feels on the lips and it does have a great level of hydration. It also smells like honey vanilla. Like it makes my mouth water when I smell it. I have such a sweet tooth. It smells so yummy. They also, when they sent this in a PR package, they, they sent the PR package with a recipe and the recipe for the smoothie, I haven't tried it yet, but it looks delicious. Anyways, this honey vanilla vibe, I'm all about. I actually got this in two different PR packages and my mom stole this one. So I'll have to hear 
her report back to you. She'll let me know how she thinks of it, but I really, really like it. So let's move into lip color product. I know this was a segue into lips, but we're on to the colorful portion. I have two different lip liner formulas to share with you that are new. First being from Hourglass, we have the Shape and Sculpt Lip Liner. Expose 1 is the lighter of the shades that I demo, and then Tempt 3 is the deeper of shades. It's a rose one nonetheless. These are two lighter shades for lighter skin tones. I really enjoy this formula. I didn't expect anything less from Hourglass. They always do a phenomenal job with their formulations. These have a really smooth application, but these are one of those lip liner formulas that does set down. Comparing it to Pat McGrath, which is the longest lasting. These don't last as long as Pat McGrath, but they are nothing to turn your nose about. These are a really great quality lip liner formulation. And looking at their range, they did a really great job of picking shades that are more natural and versatile, just really great for the everyday makeup wearer. So I think these were a solid addition into their collection and they fit right in. You know, they're one of those great solid formulas that Hourglass is known for, so I'm excited to see that they did come out with lip liners. My only critique, this is the only one. The packaging, a bit basic. You know, I love the Gold Lux packaging from Hourglass, but these are really, really nice. The other ones, I mean, this is a formula that's amongst my favorite. We just have new shades because Charlotte Tilbury launched her Hollywood Icon lip collection, which consisted of lip liners and then lipsticks, which I will get into in the moment. I just wanted to share with you what my most used shades ended up being because you know I love this lip liner formula. It is one of my favorites. So after over a month, what shades did I naturally end up gravitating towards? For a light everyday lip, Icon Baby. When I would wear a more dramatic eye and I wanted a lighter pink lip, I would start off with Icon Baby. Now, for days that I wanted more of a wearable lip, but I still wanted my lips to kind of stick out a little bit more, I wanted them to look a little bit plumper, this is one of my new favorites, 90s Pink. It's kind of similar to Pillow Tuck Medium in level of depth here. It has more of a mauve undertone comparing it to Pillow Tuck Medium, but I have always loved a mauve purpley lip, so this fit right in with my collection. It also looks really great with lighter pink lips as well. So naturally, I was hoping I could be more experimental with you guys and say that the red ended up being my most used color, but nope, I stuck with the neutral pinks. So those two were my favorites. Now, I don't have every single color. They're kind of scattered throughout my room right now, but I do have my favorites of the Char Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Icon lipsticks. So first and foremost, love the change of packaging colors here. She went from her traditional kind of rose gold to this really beautiful rose color for the pinky shades. And then she also launched multiple red shades. I have my other red ones swimming in a purse. Surprisingly, I really did like the reds, but of course I really wasn't rocking red very very often as much as I want it to be. So my two favorite shades, I did just recently mention these top two in my monthly favorites, but in case you missed it, if you're looking for a fun pink, Candy Chic is the way to go. It's fun, it's a little bit pastel, but it's still wearable. So if you're looking to experiment a bit, but you're a little bit shy, Candy Chic is such a unique, it's like pastel, but not an unflattering pastel. And of course, it's my favorite formula from Charlotte Tilbury ever. The Kissing lipstick line is my all-time favorite because it's hydrating, but it still has full opacity of a lipstick. So Candy Chic was my favorite fun color. And then Everyday Color has to go to 90s Pink paired with the 90s Pink lip liner. It gave the perfect everyday, still kind of bold, mauve purpley lip color. It's giving, I mean, I haven't put them side by side, but it's giving Mare vibes. I used to love Mare from MAC. So it kind of gives that look if you're into that. So those were my two colors from the collection that I was wearing the most. I really think that this was a great collection from Charlotte Tilbury. She really curated some gorgeous, gorgeous colors and she even convinced me to go out with a red lip a couple of times. I used to wear red lips all the time. I've slowed down. I've just loved the look of a neutral lip these past few years, but she got some red on me. That's for certain, and it looked good, and I felt confident. The other lipstick formula that launched that, oh, it is so good, you guys. Makeup by Mario launched these super satin lipsticks. Now, if you've watched my channel, 
His first round of lipstick launches was matte lipsticks and honestly I thought they were so dry, drier than the Sahara Desert. I was not a fan. They made my lips look really liney. It just wasn't flattering. But the Super Satin, oh, now they aren't like the Charlotte Tilbury Kissing Formula. They don't have that same glow. They're a little bit more matted down I would say but they're still phenomenal with a really easy lightweight glide on the lips and of course his shade range which I would expect from a makeup artist of his caliber it's so well thought out my favorite shade has been Bronx baby it's a little bit brown it's a little bit mauve it's a little bit pink but it's really pretty it's a gorgeous muted kind of neutral color what other shades have I messed around with? Nolita is really pretty. It's a little bit brighter, but Bronx Baby has been a really great neutral lip. But if you're looking for a nice, it's like a thin, smooth, satiny formulation. I love the way that these makeup by Mario just glide across the lips. I mean, definitely my favorite lip formula of his. He killed it with his lipstick range. One liquid lipstick to share with you from ABH. I've been on, I've been hating on this. I'm not going to lie. Hi, this is the Peachy Nude Lip Velvet. It is very, very, very matte. If you don't like matte, stay away. And I'm not opposed to matte, but this is like a thick, powdery matte on the lips. Now, I can see this being some people's vibe. It's not my vibe. I have this shade Peachy Nude. Oh, it's called the Lip Velvet. The shade is Peachy Nude. Anyways, it just feels like a thick layer of powder on my lips. Now, what I will give this credit for, longevity on this is incredible. It doesn't look too dry or crackly on the lips. So if you're looking for longevity, but still not as uncomfortable as like a crackly liquid lipstick, this actually might be good for you. I've heard of a couple people who really love it, but it's just too drying on my lips. I don't like the feeling. It feels too heavy. So this one wasn't a fan of personally. Are we ready for the glossy and the glowy? We have some glosses and oils to get through. So the first one is one of a small collection of colors from Gucci Beauty. They launched a plumping lip gloss. Now the packaging, I've got to critique it because it is luxury and that is what you pay for here. So it has a gorgeous top in line with the rest of the Gucci collection. And these star embossments, not embossments, but just like prints over here, which I think give it a juvenile look in my opinion, but I'm kind of juvenile, so I'll take it. Anyways, so only buy one color in this range. The range is really disappointing because these lip glosses are so sheer. I think there's like five or six colors. This is like the only shade that gives any color. It's the darkest one, or one of them at least, in Suzanne Brown. I do like this formulation. It, it has a good longevity to it. It has a little plumpness to it. It's a solid formula, but I'm not, you don't need to run out and buy this lip gloss, girl. You really don't. There's nothing super special about it. You're buying it for the brand name, which I was. I'll openly admit that. I love me some Gucci, but I only picked up one shade because the rest of them were literally overpriced clear glosses. So it's a nice formula, but there's a lot of other nicer formulas at a lot smaller of a price point, and to be honest, in a lot of ways, nicer packaging as well but it's a good formula i have a couple lip oils so the first one is an update on these Too Faced. what do they call these kissing jelly gloss i definitely think that these were intended for a younger market all of these run clear on the lips more or less some of them have some glitters so what is special about these more so is the flavors if you will they smell exactly as they sound. There's grape soda. Guess what that smells like? Grape. Raspberry. Just listen to these flavors and imagine them in your head or in your nose. <laughs> Pina colada, bubblegum, sour watermelon, sweet cotton candy. They did a phenomenal job of making these as artificial as possible and literally to smell like my childhood. These bring back so much nostalgia just with the scents alone. So... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not really recommending. I mean, I'm not really recommending these because as a lip oil, they're fine. They add some shine. They don't have much longevity, but it's giving makeup for the younger crowd because of the novelty of it all. It does add a glow. It's a very thin formula. It's fine, but it definitely isn't the leader of high quality lip oils. 
but the smell, I mean, just go into store and smell them because they shot me right back to sixth grade with how delicious and artificial they smell. I love them. I'm just like sitting here opening every single one. Oh, that's, that's watermelon, right? Whew, so good smelling. Okay. So like, I don't really like the formula in terms of being a makeup reviewer, but for just being a girl, these are fun to have. I really do like them in the packaging. It's just so cute. Another lip oil that I've been messing around with is the Summer Fridays Dream Lip Oil. I have mine in the shade Soft Mauve. I do believe I might have picked up another color, but I shouldn't have done that because this is just... This was overrated, honestly. It's really thin. It almost feels like it separates on the lips. It doesn't smooth over fine lines at all, which is what I look for my lip oils to do. They, they took the term oil and took it literally because it is almost like putting an oil on the lips. The longevity is zero. Honestly, one of the least favorite lip oils I've tried, which is really disappointing because I love the Summer Friday lip products, but I really do feel like they dropped the ball on this. But if you don't like a thick lip oil, you actually might really like this. This could be the one for you, but for me, I like them thick. This is also a pretty new launch. I don't think I shared this too much on camera, but House Labs launched their first gloss formulation. They do have oils in their line. These are the PHD Hybrid Lip Glaze. I don't notice anything with this PHD Hybrid thing, but I picked up Praline and Guava, a mauve Pink, and a brown. So my style, uh, right now I'm actually wearing Praline, but I did demo Guava. No scent really medium level of coverage it's not like a full pigment gloss but it does give you some color it's not gonna survive a meal it is a gloss a little bit on the thicker side on the gloss front but not sticky by any means it's a solid lip gloss formulation it's not anything i'm jumping for joy about but i'm not mad that i purchased these at all i just think these are a great item to get towards the house lab's goal of having a whole collection this was just something that they needed to have to cover their bases and i think they did a solid job you know there's nothing innovative about the packaging here or the formula but pretty color range it's a nice gloss i i do really like it i honestly don't have anything Nothing bad to say, but a gloss is a gloss. <laughs> these, oh, why did I say it like that? But anyways, these Lip Softies Tinted Lip Treatment launched from Tower 28. These are really nice. I still think I prefer Road and Summer Fridays if that's the immediate question you're going to. But I do really like these. The flavors and smells on these are fantastic. The lighter of the shades, kind of run the same clear glossy look. The darkest of the shades will give you a little bit of a tint. Ube Vanilla will give you a tint and I did demo Blood Orange Vanilla just so that you can see. I gotta put one on so I can accurately describe them to you. I don't want to get them mixed up with a different formula because I just tried so many glossy, glazy lip treatment products recently. This is just the clear one, by the way. What do they call this? Just the regular rescue lip treatment. So it is clear. This is just gonna work like your average everyday lip gloss balm hybrid so that you can see the glow that it gives. It's quite pretty. Like comparing it to a regular lip gloss, it leans closer like this way towards Vaseline in terms of describing it. It's not like Vaseline, but the kind of thick, gummy consistency is what these are closer to comparing it to summer fridays this doesn't have as long of a wear time as summer fridays but these are beautifully hydrating i think that these are really fun i think anything that tower 28 launches truly is gold they just don't launch bad products and these are really nice hydrating tinted lip balms so they'll give a little bit of glow to the lips they're not going to have superior longevity. Most of these style products don't. And they're really pretty. I would just say in terms of the lighter colors, you don't need all of them because they don't look much different on the lips. But once you get towards the two darkest shades is when you're going to see a tint. But they are an overwhelming tint colors. And then that leads me to my last product. Multiple colors came out. I only have this one. This is from Patrick Ta. He launched new colors of the Major Volume Plumping Gloss. Now he launched rich shades. So he has a sheer shade. Well, he has multiple sheer shades and multiple now rich shades. The sheer shades, you guessed it, sheer wash of color. 
these richer shades give a little bit more pigment to them. Now, recently, I kind of rediscovered these glosses in general, and I think they give the prettiest shine. I don't know how I didn't fall in love with these the first time I tried them, but I love the plump they give. They do give a slight plumping, sizzly, tingly kind of feel to the lips, but they make the lips look really juicy, and these rich shades, they, they are richer in color. So I just love this formula in general. So I'm really happy about these having more colors. Now, what should tell you how much I love this product, I, during the Sephora savings event, will probably purchase more colors of these because I've been loving this formula. This is coming from a gal who don't need to purchase nothing, but I don't care because I want more of this formula because I really enjoy it. It's not sticky, lasts a decent amount of time. It's just a good formula. In case you're asking like House Labs versus Patrick Ta, I'm gonna say Patrick Ta. They're both good though. And there we have it. Those are 34 products that I've been testing for you guys. Shout out to you if you came from part one. And if you did miss part one, make sure you go ahead and check that out. Comment down below if you've made your way through both parts. I truly do appreciate you. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know your thoughts on any of these products. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know your thoughts down below. And as all of my speed reviews, and I'm really excited because I actually get to put these products into my general makeup population, which is now in a different room, you guys, in my new beauty room. But yeah, I do have my speed reviews drawer in my filming room with me so I can put all of these products on whenever I'm filming to test them. And uh, the drawer was getting really heavy, so I'm excited that these are gone. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.